Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. My name is Anna and I will be moderating today's session. Today our SAP consultant Don Witzel is going to present six assets in SAP Business One. You can type your questions into the questions panel on the right side of your screen at any point throughout the session and we will leave some time at the end uh, for Don to answer those questions. I think Don, I can pass it to you over. Okay, thank you very much. So as Anna mentioned, I'm Don Witzel and I'm an SAP Business One consultant with Project Line and today we'll be going through uh, SAP's fixed asset functionality. So I'll talk a little bit about the background and then we'll go into enabling fixed assets and some of the configuration settings. Then we'll get into the asset transactions, adding new assets, performing a depreciation run, and we'll also retire an asset. Those are the main three we'll, we'll look at. We'll talk a little bit about existing assets for those who have got assets already done in uh, maybe Excel spreadsheets or something else, and then where you can find additional information. So in SAP 88 family, that would be 88, 881, and 882, fixed assets was offered as an add-on product from SAP. As of 9.0, fixed assets was brought into the core functionality, and it just needs to be turned on and configured. Uh, for those using it prior in the add-on version, it can be converted over to the new version. And in this particular session, uh, you'll be seeing SAP 9.2, and that's very similar to the 9.0.9.1 and 9.2 version of fixed assets. So let's start with enabling fixed assets and the configuration. So we want to make sure uh, when you're enabling fixed assets, you start in a test company. So to do that, we go into the Administration System Initialization, Company Details, and Basic Initialization. There's a checkbox for Enabling Fixed Assets, and that will give us uh, additional things on our menu for the setup of fixed assets and the fixed assets processing itself. So let me show you SAP. We're going to go to Administration, System Initialization, Company Details, and then on the Basic Initialization tab, down below, we've got Enable Fixed Assets here, and that's turned it on. So one of the reasons we say to do it in test system um, is because once Fixed Assets has been enabled, it can't be turned off. And then we want to decide, are we going to calculate depreciation by month or by day? By month basically takes the annual depreciation values and divides it by 12 by and books those to the individual month. By day we'll take the annual depreciation value, divide by 365, and then each month it'll book 29, 30, 31, or 28 days worth of depreciation. So that's enabling it. And now underneath fixed assets and financials and setup, we have some of the account determination and other settings. And underneath financials, fixed assets, we have the transactions and some of the reporting. So in the initial configuration, uh, some of the important things to do are the account determination. And so that will associate accounts with transaction types. For example, which account do you want to see uh, get the debit when we capitalize an asset? Which account do you want to see get the uh, expense 
for the depreciation run. And that's commonly based on asset classes. Depreciation types. Um, this is where we set up the depreciation methods and the specific calculation options. In depreciation areas, we there are uh, what, there's one main depreciation area, uh, and in our example, we'll call that gap depreciation area, and it will book to the general ledger as that transaction. And there's optional internal ones as well if you want different depreciation areas. It, the optional ones do not book to the general ledger. We've also got attribute groups. Um, very similar to SAP's user-defined fields, where we can add user-defined fields and track more information about a business partner, an item, or a document, we can add these attributes to a certain asset class. And I'll show you an example there. And then um, the last part of the initial configuration is the asset classes. Basically, for each asset class, we associate these different setups to it, so that brings it all together. So in this example here, you see that we have a truck, and it will be in the fixed assets item master, and it belongs to the heavy vehicle asset class. And that asset class has defined what's the depreciation area, and in this case, the main depreciation area is gap. The account determination is uh, set to the heavy vehicles and depreciation type is the method of the straight line. So let's show that. That was under administration, setup, financials, fixed asset. And we'll start with account determination. So I've got one for motor vehicles already added. And basically, uh, the asset balance sheet account is going to my 1620 account, motor vehicles. Uh, accumulated ordinary depreciation is going to uh, 1621, accumulated amortization on motor vehicles. And my depreciation expense is going to uh, 6415, depreciation of motor vehicles. Let's take a quick peek at that. So in my balance sheet, I've got long-term asset section, and we saw motor vehicles, and right below it, we've got accumulated amortization. So you're likely to want one account determination group per class of assets, because we'd want a different one for furniture to direct your financials there, a different one for office equipment. So if you take a look at depreciation types, here's the motor vehicle straight line one, and its method is straight line. A couple of settings around uh, when we acquire it. Uh, retirement, uh, and so how does the depreciation go in? Uh, and we're picking exact daily base right now. There's a checkbox here for round year and book value. Are you okay with your assets having pennies at the end of the year, or do you want it in full dollar figures? But the main piece here is the calculation where we're saying the depreciation is going to be calculated as the acquisition value divided by the total useful life. So depreciary, sorry, depreciation areas we talked about a little bit. Uh, this is the gap one. This one is the main one with the checkbox, and it will do the posting to the GL. And I've specifically picked uh, posting of depreciation as indirect. Our choices are indirect or direct. And with indirect, it will post to an accumulated depreciation account. With direct, it will post the depreciation credit back to the original asset account. So I've chosen indirect here. So I'll show you attribute groups. And based on a asset class, I can create attribute groups. So basically, as well as the standard SAP information on motor vehicles, I've said I'm concerned about tracking the color. 
and the last accident date. And so this is, this, this is something we'll be able to enter on all motor vehicles. So this could be different for different types, like uh, manufacturing equipment could have different information that you want to track. So asset classes is the one that brings it all together. And so in my class MV, or motor vehicle, uh, I'm associating the attribute group motor vehicles, where I'll track the color and last accident. And the depreciation areas I've picked are the gap, the standard one, and an internal one as well. So the internal one, again, does not book anything to the financials. The account determination for the MV asset class is going to that fixed assets motors. The default depreciation type is motor vehicle straight line, and the default useful life is 72 months. So as I add new motor vehicle assets, they will the depreciation will follow the account determination of fixed asset motors, and the defaults will be straight line and 72 months. But those can be overridden at the asset level. So now let's get into the transactions. So we'll start by just adding a new fixed asset. And that's added under financials, fixed asset, asset, asset master data. And then we'll capitalize it under financials, fixed assets, capitalization. So it's under financials, fixed assets, asset master data. We're going to start by taking a look at an existing asset I'd already done. And this is for a Ford F-150, uh, 2017. This screen looks very similar to the item master data record. Uh, it does have the same basis in the data structures. So when we talk about the different item numbers here and the asset numbers, those are stored in the same tables as item master. So this numbering scheme must be unique across both fixed assets and your regular items. So your numbering scheme should work with that. Um, your item groups are also across your item master. So in this case, I've created an item group called fixed assets. The sales and purchasing item are the only flags we can select. We can turn those on or off at any time. As a general rule, I probably would choose to turn them off because I don't generally want them available in my windows for purchasing or sales. At the time I do retire it, if I sell it through an AR invoice, then I probably would flip the sales item flag on and then process the AR invoice. So in addition to your standard inventory item master type tabs, we've got an extra one called fixed assets here. And so it's got a little bit of information about uh, it's an active asset. It's in the motor via MV class, motor vehicle. Uh, and there's some more grouping here. I've associated a serial number. And I've associated my employee, Kate Milton, as responsible for this asset. The capitalization date is the 4th of January this year. So that's when I transacted the acquisition. On the right-hand side, for the depreciation area for GAP, uh, we've, we've got the 2017 year shown here. It was purchased for thirty, sorry, forty thousand dollars. By the end of 2017, it's going to be thirty-three thousand three hundred twenty-eight dollars, and ordinary depreciation will be sixty-six hundred and seventy-two dollars. Down below here, we're seeing the depreciation parameters, and here's where I would be able to override it had I not already started depreciating it. The gap depreciation area starts on the 1st of January this year. I've got three days before I bought it. It's going to end in 72 months in December 2022. Let's take a look at the values tab. So here for 2017, we're seeing at the beginning of the year, we didn't have it. So there are zeros all the way across the beginning of the year. We acquired it for $40,000. 
we expect depreciation of 6,672 throughout the year, leaving us with a net book value by the end of the year of 33,328. On the depreciation tab here, we see the planned depreciation based on that straight line method for 72 months of $556 a month. So far, I've posted a depreciation run that's taken care of the January 2017 depreciation, so we have seen posted the 556, and that was all done through the standard depreciation. No manual depreciation was done on this. There's a cost accounting tab as well. So if you're currently using projects with SAP's projects or SAP's distribution rules, those can be applied to the transaction. And there's effective dates, for example, if you're hitting a different distribution rule for a few months than you will later on. And on the attributes tab, we see those two attributes I said were important for me to track within my motor vehicles. So I've got the color and the last accident date in there. Other standard things I can use on SAP are a picture of the asset, like I can on a picture of the item master. And within the attachments, I've also attached the bill of sale. So let's start by adding a new asset. So I'm going to add myself a used small car. And on the fixed asset tabs overview, I'm going to pick the motor vehicle asset class, and that's going to default my information down below. In this case, I bought a used car, so really I'm only expecting it And I turn off the purchase flag. So now I'm only expecting this car to actually last uh, four years. So I can override it at this point, the depreciation type as well, but I'm not going to. So let's add that asset. Now let's take a look at it. It's a status of new, which is different from the one we showed before. It was active because I have not yet capitalized it or depreciated it. And so all my values are blank over here. So on that other one, we saw some values for beginning of the year and then the transactions throughout the year. We don't see that yet here. So let's capitalize it now. So that's in the fixed asset capitalization. I'm going to capitalize it today. And it costs me $20,000. I could choose, I could have chosen to do this through a standard AP invoice if I do have that vendor set up. And I bought this for and choose to track that vendor. So as we can see here in line two of the journal entry preview, we're going to debit the motor vehicle's fixed asset account to 20000 In this configuration, uh, that offset is going to depreciation motor vehicles, but that's under your control. So let's add that. So now the next step I wanted to do was execute a depreciation run, and it's located under Financial Fixed Assets Depreciation Run. And basically up in the top left, we pick the depreciation area and we'll pick gap, and the period that we're uh, depreciating up to. We can preview it, and assuming we're happy with it, we can execute it.
So fixed assets depreciation run. I have already run the depreciation run twice for January, and I can rerun the most recent period. At, in this case, I've added assets after I've run the January depreciation run, so that's why I want to redo this. So I'll pick the period. In this case, it's the same one as before. In the case uh, I haven't run depreciation for a while, it can catch up. So if I have, if I happen to have acquired this in January and do my transaction, but I'm not actually doing my depreciation run until February, the February transaction would depreciate two months' worth. Let's preview that. And since my last depreciation run, I've added my used small car and it's going to depreciate $417. And I've also got a GMC Suburban 2012 in here. Uh, it's going to depreciate for $700, and we'll talk about that one in a little bit. If you are using projects or distribution rules, uh, click both of these on so that you get your journal entry broken apart by those. And now that we've previewed, I'll execute it. So if we go back, we can see our third depreciation run there. I'm going to go back into it. And we can look at the journal entry here. And so both of my assets were motor vehicles with the same GL account determination. So I'm hitting my expense account of depreciation motor vehicles for the combined value of those two vehicles. And my accumulated amortization is going up, uh, getting a credit of $1,100 as well. Let's take a look at that asset. And now we're seeing the plan isn't just 417, uh, but we've actually posted our first $417. For retirement, so when it comes to retire the asset, uh, it's located under financials, fixed assets, retirement. And I could alternatively use an AR invoice to sell it. That was under financials, fixed assets, retirement. So let me retire what I just purchased. And since it's a sales type transaction in this case, I do have an option to put in a total. I can also do the scrap transaction, and then my total goes away because I'm getting no value out of it. So let's preview that journal entry. And so one thing you'll notice here is motor vehicles from the capitalization originally had a $20,000 debit. Uh, since I'm crediting, since I'm retiring this, it's going to remove that from the, my asset account. So the credit is for the full $20,000 of the original acquisition. It's also going to remove the credits it put into the accumulated amortization in motor vehicles, so that's gone. And uh, it, I ended up with an expense of 19583 because of my loss on scrapping this. Add that. Now we'll talk about existing assets. Uh, the examples up to now have assumed the asset was acquired in the current fiscal year. What we're about to do is show you ways of loading the assets that have likely already uh, you've had before, they're in your GL, in the balance sheet and accumulated depreciation, and in the depreciation expense in prior years, but they're not in as SAP assets. They're just reflected already in your GL. So to do this, we're going to load values from an Excel spreadsheet, and that spreadsheet has 
has information such as asset number, original acquisition value, the current value of the asset at the start of the current fiscal year, and the remaining life at the start of the current fiscal year. This is done under administration, data import, export, data import, import success at master data from Microsoft Excel. We'll do that. Uh, so what's important here is there is no capitalization document process because as if he's assumed this asset was already in your asset account, accumulated depreciation, and you have recognized this one on your books in prior years. Once it is added, an existing asset, you continue with the regular depreciation runs just like the small car we bought a minute ago. This depreciation run will catch up for the entire current fiscal year. So there may be some adjustment transactions to be done. And the retirement of this asset, again, is going to credit the asset account based on the original acquisition value. That's why in that spreadsheet when we loaded it, we needed the original acquisition value. So let's show that. Uh, first, we'll start with the spreadsheet. This is the sort of spreadsheet. Um, I mentioned we, we saw the depreciation of the GMC Suburban. That's the, this is how I loaded it already. It's my asset from 2012. I've got the asset class in here. I originally bought it uh, 2012, September 1st, some serial number information, but what I want to point out here too is its useful life was 72 months. At the start of this current fiscal year, there's only 20 months left. I originally bought it for $50,000, so the accumulated ordinary depreciation that already has been accounted for in my spreadsheets was $36,111, giving me at the start sorry, at the end of last fiscal year, at the start of the current fiscal year, that leaves me with the asset value of $13,888. So we create a spreadsheet like that, and then we import it. Sorry, things are a little draggy here. So I want to import those existing assets into my current fiscal year of 2017. And I basically select what are my columns I'm importing here that match the spreadsheet. So I have item number, item description, a bunch of stuff. But the important ones in this case were that historic APC salvage value, uh, accumulated ordinary depreciation, and historic net book value. And those and remaining life, those are related to uh, the values at the start of this current fiscal year. So I'll pick my file. And I'll import it. And since I had imported it before, I get my error message that it already exists. But that's the process. Let's take a look at that one I had imported, just to show you the difference. So you see the capitalization is for the 1st of September 2012. And in 2017, the original acquisition cost was $50,000. The net book value by the end of 2017 is be, going to be 5560 because the ordinary depreciation up to the end of 2017 will be $44,440. When I look at the values, I'm seeing similar to what we've seen elsewhere. But I want to point out, if I look into prior years, even though the asset was depreciated in 2015, it wasn't depreciated in SAP as an asset. 
So really, we will have that those values from 2017 and on. So where can you find additional information? There's some available resources. Uh, there's four excellent presentations on the Business One Academy. The Business One Academy can be reached through this link. This link specifically will take you directly to the fixed assets. You, those are publicly available resources. So let me show it to you here. Uh, this is the Business One Academy main page. Where this link specifically will take you to is the accounting section and then fixed assets. So the first one, Fixed Assets 9.0, applies to uh, 9192 as well. It's a good overview pr presentation. Uh, the second one is an introduction when we get into initial settings and the working process. And so, like I said, those are excellent videos, including some uh, exercises and solutions. So you've, there's also a very good online help. Let me show you that. So this is the help for the account determination window. It gives you a description of each of the accounts, uh, the sorts of transactions that are tr that trigger these at this account determination. And we want to encourage you to try things out in your test database. And for an additional resource, uh, Project Line is always available to assist with uh, questions or implementation with you. So time for questions. Okay, I cannot see any questions, so thank you everyone for attending today. You will receive a follow-up email tomorrow with a link to the recording on our website. So feel free to share with anyone in your office that you think it might benefit. When the session ends, you will, uh, you will see a short survey display in your browser window. If you could take a minute to fill that in and let us know how we did and what you, you would like to see in the future webinars, we really appreciate the feedback. Thank, thanks again for attending and we hope to see you at the next month's webinar.